Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, June 26, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Got an interesting uh, paper that I saw today from researchers at the Graz University of Technology. The problem they're trying to solve is trying to figure out a website that a user is visiting without having direct access to the network path or any of the endpoints. So essentially they're trying to remotely sniff the network traffic. The solution they came up with is kind of quite ingenious and wonder how well it works in real life. But what they noticed is that the latency of network traffic does change as the user visits a website and the exact change depends on the website that's being visited. The simple sort of demonstration of the effect that they're showing, which is something that you may be able to also sort of repeat yourself is if you just keep pinging a particular uh, IP address, like for example, the famous 8888 Google DNS server, and then you visit google.com and then later amazon.com, well, you see some characters characteristic changes in latency as expressed in the ping round trip time. Just before recording this, I was playing with this myself and I have to say that uh, I didn't really get very conclusive results here, but uh, I'm using a VPN here back from Germany, back to the US. So uh, that adds a lot of additional noise, which of course is one of the defensive techniques if your internet connectivity is pretty noisy in the first place, meaning there's a lot of variation in latency, then of course this becomes more difficult to exploit. And of course, ICMP as ping may not be the best way to measure latency in this case. And that's really sort of where the paper then dives into. They basically assume that the victim has simultaneously a TCP connection open to the attacker, for example, downloading a web page, a large file from the attacker system. And then TCP can be used to measure latency, which actually may be more accurate and also more continuous than what what you usually get with sort of one ping a second. They do derive quite decent capabilities here and probabilities to figure out oh, what particular website a victim is visiting. In particular, if you're limiting the number of websites that you are considering. Overall, I think it's an interesting trick. It's sort of you know, one of those side channel attacks. I don't really see it as a realistic big threat, but certainly recommend you take a look at the paper because it'll probably teach you something about latency, buffering and TCP. Some of these issues that are often a little bit neglected. And Elastic Security Labs has a nice write-up with details regarding a new technique that they have observed being used in the wild. The trick here is that the attacker is using management safe console files or MSC files in order to gain full code execution. The way this works is, well, these files are being executed by the Microsoft Management Console and the way they get the victim to actually execute the files is an older cross-site scripting vulnerability. While the vulnerability appears to be old, it was apparently reported in 2018 to Microsoft and Adobe. It has not been fixed yet. And that of course makes an attractive target for attackers. And malware so far doesn't detect this particular malicious MSC file, certainly one of those extensions that you probably should block from entering your network. And as part of the block, Elastic Security Labs also talks about some te detection techniques, but they're of course more specific to their detection products. And then we have a new security update from WISE for its security cameras, probably not that secure. Actually, out of the four vulnerabilities being addressed here, the one that I consider kind of the most severe one 
is the one actually with one of the lower CVSS scores, a 7.5. It's in cloud infrastructure improper authentication vulnerability. And essentially here the device's MAC address is being used as a credential. Of course, MAC addresses are somewhat predictable, in particular if you are limited down to a particular manufacturer. So uh, that's something that I think is certainly exploitable. There's also a Wi-Fi SSID OS command injection vulnerability, but that only happens uh, during the initial setup of the device as you're reading a QR code. So don't really see that that uh, severe, but again, someone very typical because uh, you probably then pass these parameters to some uh, command line script in order to set the SSID. The most severe vulnerability here is a Wi-Fi driver heap-based buffer overflow, and that's in real tech uh, Wi-Fi drivers. So uh, that particular vulnerability may already be known, even though uh, the advisory doesn't uh, speak to that. Well, this is it for today. And then just a quick announcement about next week. Next week, again, is a little bit of travel week for myself. It's also the July 4th week. So next week, there will be no podcast. They'll continue after the July 4th week. I'll continue podcasts this week, but no podcasts next week. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.